Welcome creative adventurers. I'm Debbie Cohn of D. Cohn Designs. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here. It is week five of our free Christmas quilt along. I'm so glad you joined me. Let's go ahead and review the blocks we've done so far. Week one, the present block. Week two, the trees block. Week three, the stars block. And this week is the stockings block. It's not too late for you to join us on this quilt along. Just go ahead and head over to my blog at decondesigns.com. There you'll find the free patterns which you can download for each week of our sew along so far. And then here on my YouTube channel at Decone Designs, you'll find a video each week for every block in the quilt along. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and tell a friend and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would really help me out. Also, sign up on my email on my blog so that you can be notified by email whenever I post a new blog post and video. Take care. That's good sewing. As you may remember from previous videos, I'm actually preparing a test block out of some flannel scraps before I get cut into my actual fabric. So here you can see my test block. I want you to just quickly note that it is the block is in three sections plus a top and a bottom. You've got the cuff section right there, you've got the main body section there, and then you have the toe section down here. Then we put a small border or background at the bottom and the top of the block so that um, the block, the entire block shows, the stocking shows, without going into the seams that are between the rows. Before we start cutting our print fabric, I wanted to give you a couple of suggestions about what to do for the cuff portion of the stocking. So you have some options. Of course, you could just cut your cuff, your body, and your toe sections all out of the same 10 inch square. There is enough room, as long as you cut carefully, that will work. Another option is when you cut the cuff sections, then you can save them and mix and match amongst your five fabrics that you choose here if you want to mix them amongst just these stockings. A third option though would be to take the scraps left from the presence block, this is some of the scraps, and you could make these the contrasting cuffs for your blocks. I'm going to go ahead and choose just mixing the ones from the stockings. I'm going to mix and match the cuffs and the stockings these from specific 10 inch squares. So let's start to cut our print fabrics. A quick tip that might help you is that if you are using directional fabric, such as this fabric, for your stockings, you're going to want to cut so that you're going uh, horizontally. So the toe section, which would be fabric C, you would cut this way. You would also cut your section B, fabric B, this way. And then when you mix and match the cuffs, you would want to use the fabrics that are going horizontally. It won't look quite right if you mix and match the direction that you're cutting them. However, if you're using a non-directional fabric, which is what I'm going to use here when I demonstrate for the block, then it doesn't matter so much which way you turn Be it. Be mindful if you're using a directional fabric for your stockings um, that you cut the pieces going the same direction and you'll be just fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm going to start with my fabric C. I'm going to cut it vertically because it's easier for me to film. But if I were going to cut a directional fabric, then I would want to cut it going horizontally. Okay, let's go ahead and cut the toe body section. And you'll want to consult your pattern for the exact dimensions. Alright, here is our fabric C unit and then we'll set that aside and cut our fabric B unit out of the remainder of the square. Okay, here's our fabric B unit. We'll set that aside and last we will cut the cuff out of the scrap that remains. Again, consult your pattern for the exact size. Trim my edge one more time because it looks like it has a tiny bow in it. I don't want it to mess up my accuracy. 
Now that I've got a straight edge, then I'll, I'll cut the dimension that I need. And there's our fabric A unit, which is the cuff for a different block. And I'll cut my contrasting piece out of another square now. For the purpose of the video, I just demonstrated how to cut one layer of fabric. But here you can see that I've finished by assembly line stacking and cutting the remainder of my units. And then I've laid them out, fabric A the cuff, B the body section, and C is the toe section. And you can kind of see the shape of the stocking already beginning to form. The next step is to cut all of our background pieces. Before I start cutting the background, I want to give you a quick tip I'll about begin cutting how to my deal background with the fabric. fabric. You'll want if to refer you, to like your pattern bought for a large amount of background fabric pieces. because that's what the Again, pattern here you for. could do assembly what you might line want style to make it rather than cutting handle, just what you need is for to one take square at a time. Um, a section of it and cut it off. Well, how much do you need? What I would do is for this for this block, look at your largest dimension. In this case, mine is about nine and a half, so I'm going to round up to at least 10. And then my widest dimension as well. And I would just round it up to at least 10 by 12 or maybe 10 by 14 piece and cut the rough cut that. It doesn't have to be exact. Rough cut that section out and then iron it and then begin to cut your background pieces. You can see here that I've further cut my background fabric down to around 10, 11 inches wide before I start subcutting into my background pieces. Before I do that, I want to make sure I have a straight edge, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that selvage off about right here, just to make sure I have a clean, clean edge to work with, that it's straight. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just cutting what I need basically for one or maybe two squares at a time. These are my fabric K pieces. They are the longest pieces, so I cut those first to the dimensions in the pattern. Now I'm going to work on several with common dimensions. That would be those with the four and a half inch, that's fabrics F and G. I'm going to cut those now. I'm going to set those aside and then I will trim them to size a little bit later. Next I'm going to do the ones that are three and three quarters. That would be um, fabrics I and J will be next. There's fabrics I and J. One tip I'd like to pass along when you're cutting several pieces at once, for example, with our fabric D, when you need three squares just for one block, that means we're going to need 15 squares, is to double, triple, or quadruple your fabric and then measure it down and then subcut to size. That'll make it go a lot faster. This way, if I've got four layers, then I can just cut four times instead of 15 times to get what I need. Then that's what I'm going to do here. First, I'm going to Subcut my layers or square off my layers, excuse me, square off my layers. Now I'm subcutting my H units. I leave room for the cutting blade. There's 12, and then one more will be. 16, I'll just have an extra square. That's no problem at all. Okay, there are our teeny tiny H. And now you can see that I have my units cut, all my subunits cut for my background. There are quite a few, but it goes together pretty easily when you look at it in sections. Again, we're going to sew this in subsections. We'll sew the cuff unit, then we'll sew the body unit, then we'll sew the toe unit, and last we'll add the top and the bottom to the square. And you can hear my cat in the background. She's hungry. I think I'll take a break and feed her now. 
So you can see here on my design board, I've got my cuff section ready to sew. First I have my fabric A, which is the cuff, and then the two background pieces for the sides, the fabric D and the fabric E. I just have it laid out on a simple homemade design board. If you want to make one, you just take some foam cord, the size you want, I recommend at least 12 by 12 or maybe a little larger, wrap it with a little batting, and then tape around the edges to give it a smooth edge on it. And that's your homemade design board. You can, of course, purchase them from several different sources as well. I'm going to go ahead and carry my cuff unit over to the sewing machine and sew. Let's get sewing. Okay, now I'm going to sew the cuff unit together. I'll sew the left side of fabric D to the left side of fabric A, and then I'll sew the fabric E to the right side of fabric A. Again, it's right sides together and quarter inch seam. Now I'm going to sew the other side onto our cuff. Okay, now we're ready to press the cuff unit. We're going to want to press the seams to the outside on both sides. You may have to give it a little nudge and iron both the front and the back to help that happen. What I like to do is set my seams first on both sides, and then I'm going to nudge it to the outside. I want to be careful not to distort the unit, so I'm pressing gently, pushing on it gently, and the same on the other side. Like that. Then I check the other side, making sure the seams are laying flat. Give it a quick press just to make sure, and we're ready to move on. All right, now that we've sewn the cuffs unit, it's time to begin the main body stocking unit. So here you can see I have my fabric B, which is the main top body of the stocking, and then my two background pieces, fabric F and fabric G. We're ready to sew. Now we're ready to start sewing the body of the stocking. This is the upper section. We're gonna use our fabric B, and then our two background sides will be fabric F and fabric G. Let's get started. Now I'm going to attach the other side. Again, right sides together with a quarter inch seam. Next, we'll take it to the iron and press our seams. Now it's time to press the top section of our stocking. We're going to want to iron the seams toward the inside, toward the center of the unit. That's because when we get to add the toe unit, we're going to want to nest the seams in that section. So we want to make sure we press these to the inside. You can see they kind of want to lay the other way, so we're going to first, um, we're first going to just Rest them for a moment. And then we're going to encourage them to go the way we want them to. So I'm gently nudging them like this, trying not to distort the block, the seam, or the unit. Pressing gently. So our seams are toward the center. Then I check the back to make sure and press them down if they need it. And that looks pretty good. Now we're moving on to the toe unit of the stocking. So as you can see on the design board, I have my fabrics laid out. Here's my fabric C for the toe unit. The fabric H's, which are the small squares we're going to use to snowball or create diagonals on our stocking in both corners on this side, then down over here would be the heel section as well. And then I have fabric I and J, which are our background pieces on each side of the toe of the stocking. We're going to next draw our lines on the back side of our H units, and then we're going to sew with a diagonal onto the corners of the stocking and to create the toe section of the unit. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Before we can sew the pieces together, we need to snowball three of the four corners of the toe print 
fabric C. In order to do that, first we need to draw a diagonal line from quarter to quarter on our small squares. The fastest and easiest way that I've found, if you don't have seam tape and that doesn't work for you, the diagonal seam tape, then you can line them up along a mat line like this and then line up your ruler like that and make sure it's just to the right of the line and draw your diagonal line remembering that excuse me just to the left of the line remembering that your pencil lead has a little bit of a width to it so you to get it even you want to make sure that you account for that and here I am sketching carefully corner to corner and again you can use any marking tool that works for you a friction pen or chalk or whatever depending on the fabric you've chosen and here I've done enough for two uh, blocks at a time. I'll go ahead and draw the rest of them in a moment and then I'll show you how we're going to snowball the corners of our toe. Before we start sewing the snowballs onto the corners of the toe section, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. As you can see here, I've put my three uh, small squares on the corners. If you have a directional fabric for your fabric C, then you'll need to make sure that you put your two squares on the left side and then the one square on the right side. This side, the left side, will create the toes and the right side will create the heels. Again, pay attention to the diagonal line as well, the direction that the diagonal line goes. You want it to sew on the diagonal line and that will create the corner, the diagonal that we need in those three corners. So here's what I mean about making sure that if you have a directional fabric that you have your squares in the correct places. So one on the right side and two on the left with your angles going this way. That creates the toe and the heel. As you can see, I've sewn just outside to the right of the drawn line. That way, when we pull it back like this, it will account for the fold over that we will have and the dimension of the block will still come out correct. So let's go ahead and sew those other two corners. All right, now you can see that we have the snowballs on. The next thing we're going to do is trim the excess over here. We will be folding and then ironing this top, the top flaps back. So we're going to cut this excess and you can eyeball it at about a quarter inch. You can use shears, you can use a rotary cutter. I'm probably just going to use my shears and snip that off. Again, I'm just eyeballing my quarter inch. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'll do the same on the other two corners. Now I'm going to take it to the iron and press our, our uh, angles back and that will create the toe and the heel of our sock. Now we're ready to press the toe section of our stocking. As you can see, I've snowballed the three corners and I've eyeballed trimming off about a quarter inch. The next thing is to set the seams just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to press those triangles carefully back. That one looks pretty good. That one looks very good. And the third one. Let's do this. And we're pressing our seams for these to the outside. The last thing we need to do before we add our top and bottom is to sew our side pieces on the toe body unit. So here's my fabric I on the left side and our, my fabric J on the right side. We're going to go ahead and sew those right sides together, quarter inch seam, and then we're going to press the seams away from the unit, away toward the outside. The reason for that, of course, is because we want to avoid the bulk at the three corners where the snowball uh, triangles are. If you have a small error right here, like I did, where you accidentally sewed the seam the incorrect way, one way to fix that is to take your snips or a small pair of shears and then just snip that. Don't cut through to the uh, seam, 
but then you can just flatten it out gently like that with your iron and that's what I'm going to do. You can see here is where I flattened out the seam, snipped it and flattened it with the iron and it's perfectly fine. Then I iron both of my seams away from the center of the unit and this is what it looks like on the other side. So we're ready to attach the three sections together. One quick thing you'll need to do before you attach them together is to square your unit up to the correct size, just trimming off any uh, odd bits. So consult your pattern for the exact dimensions and go ahead and score up the toe body unit. Now we're ready to attach the cuff to the top body part of the stocking. Before we attach the cuff unit to the body of the stocking, we just need to check our measurements and trim the cuff unit if necessary. So check your pattern for the exact dimensions and give it a quick trim if it needs it. The same for the uh, upper body section of your stocking, like this one right here. You'll just want to check your dimensions and trim it if necessary. It should not need much, if any. When trimming your units to size for this block, I recommend that you trim from the left hand side, not the right hand side. If you have excess like I do here, just go ahead and trim it slightly on the left hand side. That will ensure that your block comes out accurate all the way from top to bottom. Again, when you're going to sew these parts together right here, the cuff to the body, you're going to want to center the body over the cuff. Mine looks like it's quite accurate, so I don't, I'm not concerned about that. So when I sew, I'm going to sew them together from this end going that way. That way, if I need to trim any excess, it'll be off of this side, and the cuff will remain centered on the unit. Now I'm going to sew the cuff to the body of the stocking. You can see here that I've pressed the seam so that it's away. Here you can see I have the stocking laid out on my design board. One thing you might want to note is when you're attaching the two sections together, I've had you press the center seams going to the left and then the toe section to the right. That means we will be able to nest our seams like this when we sew the two sections together. And that's important in this one section right here where they um, attach uh, right at the intersection. So you'll want to make sure you nest your seams right in that one specific spot. And I will pin there, there, and two or three more down as I sew the unit just to make sure I've got it on straight. Okay, next we're going to press this middle seam here and we're going to press it open. That will help the whole block lie flat. Alright, as you can see I've squared up my stocking and the only thing I have left to do is add my fabric K strips to the top of the block and the bottom of the block to frame it and we'll be done with the block. Let's get sewing. As you can see I have it all pinned. I'm not usually big on pins, but in this case the strips are long and skinny and I want to make sure that they get sewed on proper, sewn on properly. So I'm going to go ahead and sew them right sides together with a quarter inch seam all the way down, flip the block around and sew the other side on as well, the, other, the top and the bottom on as well. There we are. All we need to do is press our seams. We're going to press the seams away from the block toward the outside, the top and the bottom seams, and square up the block and we'll be done. And there you have it, the completed stocking block for this week's Quilt Along. Please join me again next week when we will be constructing the ornaments block. It's not too late to join in. Go to my blog at Decone Designs and download the free pattern for this week and the previous weeks as well. And then go back to check the YouTube videos 
for the previous week's videos. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and tell a friend. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, that will help me out. And visit my blog and sign up to be an email subscriber so you get an email notification every time I post a blog post and a new video. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.